Hey, recap hour over here. Today, we will be summarizing an Australian film called Cafe Funiculi Funicula. Spoiler alert. Watch out and take care. In the quiet suburbs of the bustling city of Japan, there lies a popular cafe. A popular rumor about the cafe has been spread that a particular chair of the cafe can take the customer back to any point in time they wish. But there are some specific rules for going to the past. Rule 1. You can't meet people that haven't visited the cafe once. Rule 2. If someone does something different in the past, it doesn't change the present. Rule 3. Only one seat in the cafe has the power to take someone to the past. If that seat is already occupied by a customer, then the person has to wait. Rule 4. You can't leave the seat when you go back to the past. Rule 5. You can only go to the past for the time the coffee is served, until it gets cold. After describing this mysterious rumor to the audience, the story starts. We are introduced to Kazuda Kida. She works in the cafe as a waitress. The cafe is owned by one of her relatives, Nagar Takeda. One day, a woman named Fumiko approaches Kazu and asks her to send her to the past week, to the time when she had visited the cafe with her boyfriend. They broke up over there, but now Fumiko wants to go back to that time to make things right and stop her boyfriend from leaving Japan. Kazu tells her that, even as she manages to change the past, she won't be able to change the present. Fumiko wasn't ready to give up. She went forward to ask the customer sitting on that specific seat to move. The employees and other customers ask her not to disturb the person, because she is a ghost and her only chance to secure the seat, is when the ghost goes to the restroom. Seeking no other choice, Fumiko decides to wait. At around 8 p.m., Kazu wakes her up and asks her to take a seat. She rushes there. Kazu arrives and tells her the final rule. If she doesn't complete her coffee before it gets cold, she will turn into a ghost. She tells her story about the ghost who was sitting there earlier. She had faced grave consequences because she didn't complete her coffee. Despite listening to this warning, the woman decides to give it a shot. Kazu fills up her cup with hot coffee. The steam from the coffee reaches the roof. Droplets of water start falling from above. Fumiko is pulled into a pool of water. Suddenly, she finds herself on the chair one week prior to the present. At first, the woman couldn't believe her eyes. She panics. However, she manages to pull herself together on time and have a conversation with her boyfriend. She confesses her feelings but drinks up her coffee before listening to his. Before she goes back to her time, Goro tells her that he and his girlfriend have already broken up and left for the airport. The one tries to stop him, but he doesn't listen and thus, their conversation doesn't reach a decisive turn. The woman comes back to her present time. She feels guilty for not listening to Goro on that day. However, Kazu encourages her by saying that she can change the future. Fumiko grows motivated and decides to go to the US to join her boyfriend. After she leaves, Kazu gets in a conversation with one of the customers. He was waiting for the seat, but chickened out at the last moment. They discuss the magical moment he witnessed in the cafe and leaves. The next day, the same customer arrives in the cafe again. His name is Ryasuke. He asks Kazu to put up his photo for exhibition, and they happily take it up. Looking at Ryasuke's photograph, Kazu is pulled into the memories of her childhood. Kazu decides to visit the exhibition. During the exhibition, Ryasuke and Kazu get into talking. Kazu explains her attachment with a particular photograph of Ryasuke. The photographed alley was where Kazu used to live with her mother. Back at the coffee house, Kazu talks to one of the regular customers, Mrs. Kotek. She is suffering from dementia and thus doesn't remember anything about her life. Mrs. Kotek has even forgotten his husband's face and has been using her maiden name for the last two years. But still her husband acts as his nurse and takes care of her. One night, Mr. Fusadi, her husband, got into conversation with Kazu and Nagar and described the entire situation to them. But he had a misunderstanding. While Mr. Fusagi thought that his wife has entirely forgotten the fact that she was married, the truth was she had just forgotten his face. It was Kazu who explained it to him. She came to know about it when Mrs. Kotek has requested her to use the chair to go back to the past to meet her husband. She wanted to give him a letter. Listening to this narrative, Mr. Fusadi decides to go to the past to get it. 
Kazu encourages him and thus he leaves. The man closes his eyes as Kazu pours the coffee. Just like the last time, the man falls into a deep sleep, is thrown into the water and reaches the right time. He was happy to see his wife in a condition, which she remembered him and talked to him like old days. They chatted for a while about the daily household. The husband found the perfect opportunity and asked for the letter. The wife was shocked and then realized that her husband was back from the future. She asked him about her condition and their future. The husband remained quiet or uttered monosyllabic words for most of the time and watched her talk. Finally, she takes out a letter from her purse and hands it over to him. She asks him to leave before it's too late. Before leaving, he assures her that everything will be fine. Back in the present, the husband opens up the letter. He reads it while remembering the time when he found her writing this letter. His eyes are filled with tears and he starts crying. He requests Kazu to address his wife as Mrs. Fusagi again and exits the cafe. Back in his house, he tells his wife the truth. As expected, his wife fails to believe him, but he calmly handles the situation. Kazu spends the next day with Ryasuke's friends. The day ended with Ryasuke promising to be her friend. Time passes by. Ryasuke and Kazu grow closer. One day after getting back to the coffee shop, Kazu finds that Miss Hurai has gone to her parents' house because of the sudden and unfortunate demise of her sister in a traffic accident. Miss Hurai was a regular customer at their cafe. She was on bad terms with her parents and was avoiding her family since then. Her sister arrives at the cafe now and then, hoping to talk to her but she keeps hiding from her. She doesn't even receive her letters. Suddenly Miss Hurai arrives at the coffee house. Nagar and Kazu express their condolences for the demise of her sister, but it seems like she was indifferent to her surroundings. She left the house even though it was her sister's funeral. She talks about the day she had left her house to pursue her dreams and thinks about her sister. Kazu hands her over a bag full of letters. She pushes it back, but Kazu forces her to take it. At night, after closing her bar, Miss Hurai stares at the bag for a while. She takes out one letter, looks at her sister's handwriting, and starts crying. The next morning, she arrives at the cafe and requests Kazu to give her the seat. She wants to see her sister. She impatiently reaches the chair to disturb the ghost, but Kazu and Nagar stop her from doing so. Kazu decides to help her. She pours a few cups of coffee in the ghost's cup. After having a few drinks and some cookies, the ghost finally goes to the restroom. Miss Hurai takes this as her opportunity and takes the seat. Kazu, worried that she might get lost in the moment, because she is meeting a deceased person, gives her an alarm. She pours her coffee and Miss Hurai jumps into time travel. The interaction between the two sisters was emotional. While Miss Hurai promises to go back to her house and run the hotel, her sister tells her that she wants to run the hotel with her. An overwhelmed Kumi prepares to go to the restroom. Miss Hurai tries to stop her and warns her against coming to meet her on November 19. But her sister doesn't believe her. She laps off, thinking about a similar kind of prank that she used to pull in her childhood and goes inside the restroom. Suddenly the alarm starts ringing. Miss Hurai ignores it and runs behind her sister. But Kazu stops her halfway and reminds her about her promise to the future Kazu. She picks up the coffee cup and before gulping it, asks Kazu to tell her sister that she was sorry. She drinks the coffee while sitting at the table and leaves. When she comes back to her time, she quickly calls her house to inquire about Kumi. But she comes to know that even though she gave Kumi a warning, the future didn't change. She comes to know the next day was her funeral and decides to attend this. With a fresh feeling, she leaves the cafe. The next day, Ryasuke arrives in the cafe to have lunch. He got into a conversation with Nagar. He tells him that it was the responsibility of Takeda women to serve coffee on that table, and Kazu has been doing this since her elementary school. He also reveals that the ghost sitting on that chair is none other than her mother. Ryasuke was surprised to hear this. Nagar further tells him that she has been sitting on that chair since Kazu was six. Nagar doesn't want Kazu to listen to all of this, so he stopped talking when Kazu enters. Later, Ryasuke asks her about the incident. She reminisces about her mother and tells him about the time she would pour coffee into her mother's cup so that she can meet his father. 
she forgets about the time and gets stuck in the loot forever. In short, she can never come back to the present. She doesn't even age. Kazu regretted pouring coffee into her mother's cup that day. But Ryasuke assures him that she was spreading happiness by pouring the coffee, and the happiness is going to come back to her someday. In fact, he promised to give her happiness little by little every day. It sounded like a proposal, but Kazu was scared at first. She agreed after giving him a confused look. Kazu celebrated the night of New Year's Eve with Ryasuke's friend. Ryasuke and Kazu kissed on the roof. They spend the night together. A few days later, Kazu accompanies Ryasuke to his hometown and meets his parents. Ryasuke graduates and finds himself a job in the city. Soon, Fumiko returns from US. She goes to the cafe to meet Kazu and Nagir. While talking with her, Nagir tells her that it was possible to go to the future, but since they can't pinpoint the exact moment or can predict if a particular person is at the cafe, it is not worth the effort. Ryasuke listens to this. While coming back from the cafe, Ryasuke meets Kazu. She reveals the news about her pregnancy. Ryasuke is happy but Kazu starts crying. Back in the cafe, while Ryasuke apologies to Nagir for this incident, Kazu blames herself for everything that happened with her mother. She questions herself if she deserves happiness. Ryasuke suggested going to the past, but Nagir tells him that it isn't possible. Since traveling to the past requires a Takeda woman to pour the coffee. Kazu is last in the line. Ryasuke suggests some other ideas, but Nagir denies them all, on the ground that they have already tried them and they don't work. Nagir and Ryasuke get into an argument. Kazu stops them and starts crying thinking about her destiny and her mother. Ryasuke stares at her helplessly. Kazu and Ryasuke spend the entire night thinking about this situation. But suddenly something strikes Ryasuke's mind. The next day, he rushes to the cafe to tell Nagir and Kazu about it. He rushes into the cafe and blurts out that he found a way to send Kazu to the future. Ryasuke goes to Kazu's house and issues him that he would send her to the future. He asks her to be present at the cafe at 8 p.m. The next day, Kazu reaches the cafe at the designated time. She was surprised to see her mother missing. She stares at the vacant seat for a while. Suddenly, a young girl appears on that seat. She is elated to find herself in April 2019 and asks Kazu to take up the seat immediately. She introduces herself as Miki. Kazu is shocked to find her pouring coffee, but cooperates with her. The girl asks her to think about 20th December 2000, four months after her mother was lost in the space-time zone. She is surprised but follows her instructions. Kazu feels like drowning in water. She reaches the exact time. Kazu finds her younger self pulling her mother as she was trying to leave. The voice of Kazu echoed in the atmosphere asking her to leave. Absent-mindedly, her mother dropped a spoon set that hurt the young Kazu. Nagir took her to the hospital while her mother stared at the door. Kazu arrived in the cafe in her physical form and asked her to drink up her coffee and leave. She pulls her into the chair and asks her to drink the coffee. Her mother follows her advice. Her mother identifies her. Kazu starts crying. The truth was finally out. On that day, Kazu's mother didn't sit on that seat to visit her father. She had gone to visit Kazu. The doctor has diagnosed her with a disease that has given her only three months to live. She had come to Christmas Eve to see how her daughter was doing. Kazu regrets misunderstanding her and hugs her happily. They talk about the incident for a while. Kazu's mother comes to know that she didn't make it back on that day and turned into a ghost. When Kazu apologized, her mother consoled her for a while. Suddenly, the alarm rings. Kazu refuses to leave. Her mother forces her to drink the coffee. With eyes full of tears, Kazu gulps the coffee. Her mother promises to love her forever and to watch her all the time. Listening to her final words, Kazu felt relieved and she left the time zone. Kazu, back in her seat, finds the ghost of her mother standing beside her and gets up abruptly. As she takes her seat, Kazu stares at her while remembering her promise to watch her forever. She rushes out to meet Ryasuke. Meanwhile, the other characters also understand the importance of the present and start doing what's right. Fumiko moves in with Goro. 
Miss Hurai moves back in with her parents and takes responsibility for the hotel. Mr. Fusagi starts treating his wife as his better half. Kazu hugs Ryasuke and confesses her true feelings for him. Several months later, Kazu gives birth to a beautiful baby girl. Rated 6.5 on IMDb, the movie is a theoretical masterpiece. The cinematography takes you through a roller coaster ride of emotions, and I can assure you that anyone can easily fall in love with its script. While most time traveling movies use complex facts that make it more educational, this one you can watch by unleashing your emotions. What do you think about this movie? Do tell your opinion in the comments below. Press the like button if you agree with its message. Do subscribe, it helps the channel grow. Thank you.